Still Meyer Games, and I'm here as usual on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Central Time here in St. Louis. There goes Walter, off the new Walter stuff. Um, yeah, hi. He's very talkative this morning. We don't really know what he's talking about. Walter, do you want to come say hi? He's going to run away if I get him. Uh, but I hope you're doing well on this fine Wednesday. Uh, what do we? I, I have a few little things to share today. Uh, good morning, Dominic. Thanks for popping in to say hi. Some games I've played recently. Um, some, sh some shipping status. Last week was Essen, so uh, I haven't gotten the full recap from Essen yet, but I've heard that people seem to have a good time. My team seemed to have a good time. We ran a success successful booth, bringing joy to people, I hope. I hope if you stopped by, you walked away with a smile on your face. And uh, yeah, so one thing I wanted to mention today is a shipping status update. Uh, uh, Tom is asking about Rolling Realms Redux updates. Tom, yeah, we do a monthly newsletter about Rolling Realm, Realms Redux where I talk about the latest things going on with that. So I think I sent it, sent it a few weeks ago. The latest reveal for it. What was the latest reveal for Rolling Realms Redux? Let's look it up. Um, I'll do a shipping update right after I look this up. Rolling Realms Redux, the last reveal was, let's see, so far we've revealed Planet Unknown, Etowa, the bat-themed game, and uh, Legacy of You. Those are the last three that we revealed. So we have another reveal coming up soon, but those are the three realms included in Rolling Realms Redux that we've revealed so far. So a quick shipping update about Apiary and uh, the Wingspan fan art pack. This is what we're shipping right now. Shipping containers are arriving at each fulfillment center region in at different times. So the, uh, the first one to have arrived was Australia. Australia, that covers Australia, New Zealand, and Asia. That ship out has begun. And remember, all these ship outs, even if you start to hear that some people are getting shipping notifications, it just means that in some time in the next like two to four weeks, you will also receive a shipping notification. You should not be alarmed if you haven't received one yet, if you've heard one other person or even a few other people say they've gotten them because they can't ship everything at the exact same moment. These shipments take time to get out. So Australia has started shipping. In the US, the container arrived uh, on Monday and I think they're processing it this week. They have a lot to receive and hopefully they will start shipping them out this week. In Canada, we're expecting the shipping, the shipping container to arrive tomorrow and start shipping out probably next week. I doubt they'll start shipping out anything this week. And then in Europe, October 23rd is the date that we had. That was the slowest shipping container uh, to arrive October 23rd and they're ready and prepared to start shipping out everything in that shipment right away upon receipt because we know that that one is the slowest one so we want to get it out right away um yeah so that is the shipping update for apiary and the wingspan fan art pack i'm very excited to get these games these products in your hands that also includes the other stuff that we have we have the, the disc golf disc and the rolling realms uh, the new realms those are still all this stuff is still on our web store uh so we we launched it last week we're shipping it pretty much right away and eager to get it into your hands Let's see. Good morning, Mark. Blake. Uh, Steve says, is Legacy of You a solo-only realm since it's a solo-only game? No, it's just, uh, you know, Le Rolling Realms isn't a solo-only game, so it is a realm that you can use just like any other realm. I'm doing a playthrough today, actually, or round one of a playthrough of Arc Nova, Honey Buzz, and the Isle of Cats. So if you want to join me for a live play today at 3 o'clock Central Time, St. Louis Time. I'll be on the Rolling Realms Facebook group doing that, and then I'll post the video on YouTube later if you want to play along later. Steve says, uh, have I heard anything about the Revive expansion? I have not, Steve. No, I just played Revive once at Geekway. Good morning, uh, Trong. Thank you for, for joining me today. Um, yeah, so Essen News. I don't, I don't know if I have much news from Essen. Obviously, it was it happened like right after last week's live cast. I heard that uh, I, I saw photos of the booth. I wasn't there. My my coworker Dave was the one in charge of the booth. 
Uh, he was assisted by Alex and Susanna, who had other responsibilities there. Susanna was meeting with retailers. Alex was meeting with distributors and localization partners. Susanna also meeting with localization partners. And so if you were at Essen, you may have met those three. Those are my coworkers. And you also may have met people on the demo team who might have looked like my coworkers because they had our shirts on. But really, they're just wonderful people who gave of their time at at Essen to help welcome people into our games. People like Corel, who is very involved with Rolling Realms. Um, I think uh, Christian, who is very involved with our replacement parts. I think he was there briefly. A lot of amazing people were there at the booth. Um, I hope you had a good time there if you were at Essen. If you weren't there and you saw people carting away games like Apiary and the Wingspan Fan Art Pack, uh, while they were at Essen, we also still have them on our web store and are actively selling them on our web store and shipping throughout October and maybe a little bit into November. Let's see. In fact, I just got an email from Martin. Martin is here right now. Martin just emailed me to say that he had a wonderful chat with Alex. Great time meeting Alex at Essen. And Martin walked away with two copies of Apiary. Well done, Martin, for getting two of those. Um, Let's see, Justin says, now that Expeditions is available in retail, are you able to determine whether the unusual pre-order reveal method was a success for you or was it still, or is it still too early for that? Was that one time, was that a one-time thing or do you expect to do it in the future? Justin, it's a good question. I, I like experimenting with things like that, see how it goes. Uh, just to, to explain what, what happened with it very briefly, usually when we launch a new product like we did, what, like what we did with Apiary, is we announce it, we reveal what it is, and then a few weeks later, we have it on our web store. And then a few weeks later, we ship it to you. So everything happens in a fairly condensed amount of time. For Expeditions, you know, I, I knew how many copies of Scythe we've sold overall. It's close to 600,000 at this point. And so I was really worried um, about vastly underestimating quantity, uh, the quantity that people wanted, the early adopters in particular wanted for the first print run of Expeditions. So we, I did something a little bit different where I announced the game right after we went to print, a time where we can still manipulate the quantities a little bit. Um, and we got really the, the quantity from direct orders was exactly what I would have predicted for Expeditions. The quantity we received from uh, distributors and retailers, the amount that they wanted to order, was way higher than we would have predicted. Um, so I think it was good that we did this to a certain extent because it means that those distributors and retailers didn't need to wait a super long time after the uh after we were shipping to direct order customers to get their games but at the same time they ordered so many more that we literally had to start like a second wave of the first printing which delayed the retail release by quite a bit like quite a bit after we were shipping we shipped to customers in june normally we would release to retailers about uh you know eight weeks later instead they had to wait until the end of september so um, so that we could not allocate any retailers. So Justin, it's a work in progress. It's, I don't know, I, I, I think it was fine. Um, but I'm also, I also still, I think, prefer our launch method, if that, if that is an option. What did you prefer? What did, did you like that? Did you like uh, having kind of months between the learning about the game and receiving it? Um, and then many, another three months after that for, for retailers? Let's see, June, July, yeah, three months after that. Or do you prefer our normal launch method? I, 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 I want to learn as we go. Chad says, Honorim is such a fun solo game, especially on his phone. Do you have any go-to games on your phone that you play when you have a bored moment? You know, Chad, I, I don't... Re so I, I, I used to have one. Um, let's see if I can pull it up. I think it's called... What is it called? I, I hardly ever play games on my phone. Yeah, okay. I used to play one in idle moments called Stupid Zombies. Um, that is... That is a game that's on my phone, but I hardly ever play games on my phone now. Um, if I have an idle moment to look at my phone, I'm usually scrolling through Instagram. Um, yeah, that, that's yeah. I don't I don't play around on my phone very often. Uh, but that's a good question for anybody, anyone watching this now. Do you have a go-to idle moment game on your phone that you really enjoy? Let us know in the comments here. Miles says, uh, morning from Sheboggan, Wisconsin. Excited to get, check out a disc golf shop here later today. Well, that's fun, Miles. It's always fun to check out a local disc golf shop to see what they have. Tim says, how much of the pre-order was to know the amount of Ironclad versus regular? That was part of it, Tim. Yeah, we had two different versions of Expeditions, and so um, we wanted to make sure that we had the right quantity, 
quantity of each. And as it turned out, we didn't have enough ironclad even for consumers. So it was good that we announced it in advance so that we can make more faster um, and have those ready for consumers. Still not, uh, you know, there still ended up being two waves of the ironclad version, but it, really, it definitely was faster than if we had done it launch style. So that could play a role in it in the future as well, Tim. Good question. Nancy Jane says that she won a promo card for the new altered trading card game this week. I'm really curious to play that game. Really excited. Thank, thank you, Nancy Jane, for sharing about that. Daniel mentioned uh, Marvel Snap as his go-to phone game. I have enjoyed Marvel Snap. I haven't played it on my phone. I usually I played it on the computer when I did play it. Pete is here. Pete says, excited for design day this weekend. He had some great play tests of his game this week, and it relieved a lot of stress about showing it to strangers. I'm glad to hear that, Pete. And I missed you at the farmer's market this past weekend. Um, so this weekend we have uh, two things about this. One, actually for Pete, Pete, I played the copy of For Northwood that you lent to me. This is a solo only game that I actually think would work really well as a mobile game. For Northwood, just a solo trick taking game that I had a lot of fun with. Um, the other thing, Design Day. So Stillmeyer Games host an annual mini convention where we invite uh, people, uh, designers, new, often amateur designers, newer designers to come and play test their games and invite other people to come and be play testers for those games. And also the designers end up play testing as well throughout the day. Uh, we host this at Pieces Board Game Bar and Cafe. And uh, it is, it, it's full, it's sold out, all that. There's limited space for pieces, but I'm really excited about it. That will be the focus of my weekend. So we're doing pieces. We're doing some disc golf on Saturday. Um, I'm having some, some team building stuff throughout the weekend because my coworker Joe is coming into town. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be a fun weekend for Stillmeyer Games. So I look forward to sharing those stories. In fact, I'll make a note to make sure to share the stories of Design Day on the blog next week so you can see how it went. Um, Pete says about Four Northwood, it is such a simple and clever take on a seemingly impossible task, a solo trick taking game. And Pete is absolutely right. It is, uh, it's really neat to see that. Um, let's see, Justin recommends Professor Layton is great on the phone, quick puzzles and a digestible mystery story. Michelle says Euchre. Josh says he just picked up a job at his friendly little game store and a cafe. Pretty excited to get started. Congratulations, Josh, on that new job. That's awesome. Um, Garrett says, as someone who is likely, who is likely going to buy 95 plus percent of some of products, I far prefer the normal announce and ship soon after. So I don't have to wait. That's interesting, Garrett. And I definitely hear that. I, I wonder if that is maybe the, uh, for people who are already pretty sure that they're going to buy a, still, a new some game release, um, that, that they might prefer the launch version rather than having to wait a few months to get it. If this is the thing kind of have already pre-decided that they're going to be excited about it, which I think is wonderful. I think it's wonderful that you're there. I, and I really appreciate anyone like that. I also don't hold it against anyone who you're like, you often or usually support some of our games products to not buy the latest thing. I know you have a lot of different things that you could buy that you could bring to your table. And I appreciate that sometimes still my games things are among them. I'm excited tonight. I'm hoping if my gaming group is up for it, I'm hoping to finally play a game of Wingspan with the Wingspan fan art cards that I have. So I'm going to set this aside over here as a reminder to myself to try to get that to the table tonight if people want to play it. Also, uh, last week I got to play Euphoria. It's pretty rare that I get to play games that I designed or published versions of games that I designed. But um, Megan requested it. Megan and her brother joined me for a game of Euphoria, and we had a blast. Megan won, but I had fun uh, kind of reteaching it and reacquainting myself with Euphoria. I have not played in quite some time. Um, and it did, it reminded me a lot of Apiary, or Apiary reminded me of a kind of a modernized version of Euphoria. Um, so I, that, I think that's one of the reasons that I've really enjoyed playing Apiary a lot recently too. Other things I played recently, Lost Runes of Arnak, we played game five of the new campaign expansion, played Space Base on Board Game Arena, also played Draftosaurus on Board Game Arena. I played Thick, uh, Flick of Faith and Spots. Uh, I learned Flick of Faith. I taught Spots at a game day this past Saturday. And also played Sushi Roll, which I haven't played in a while. But Sushi Roll is always a delight with those big, chunky custom dice. Let's see. Um, Anthony says, congratulations on the production of of Apiary and the Wingspan fan art pack. Look, looking forward to, to both of them. Michelle also looking forward to the Wingspan fan art pack. 
Let's see, Mark has a thought on release methods. Oh, I, I missed a few previous comments. Sorry about that. I'll scroll back up. Um, okay, yeah, I missed a bunch of comments. Uh, sorry, Ian says car he likes cartographers and uh, rolling, what is it? Railroads Inc. on iPad. Also, Viticulture Ring Spain Ticket to Ride on iPad are great as well. I'm happy to hear that. Paul says he also enjoys Four Northwood. Yeah, really clever, really clever trick taking game, solo trick taking game. Excited to see Paul at Design Day this this weekend too. Cody says, excited to be here. I'm wondering if, when considering theme, um, you know if an audience exists that would be interested in that theme, or do you take a, if we build it, they will come mentality? Hmm, interesting question, Cody. Maybe a little bit of both. I uh, I think there's certain certain themes that I think, uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, that I have a hunch that there will be people that will be excited about that theme even if it isn't a theme that they're already thinking about or, or, or are already excited about. And also, I like putting little twists on themes, like uh, the Space Bees and Apiary probably isn't a theme that anyone was thinking, hey, I wish I could have a, g a game about bees in space. But uh, but it's different. You know, it's a different take on a space game um, or on a bee-themed game. And I, I so far, it seems people have responded pretty well to that, uh, that mashup, that hybrid concept. So... You know, it's, it's, a, it's on a case-by-case -case basis that I think about. It's, I would say it's more that I think about this theme. I, I don't see a lot of people resonating with this theme. I don't view this being a potential evergreen game or a best-selling game uh, because of the theme. That more often eliminates the game rather than... Um, uh, or not eliminates the game, but makes me want to think about other themes that could work better for that game than the, than the theme, than, than that specific theme. Donna says, are there any SN releases that I'm aware of that I'm excited about? She grabbed Imperial Miners from Portal Games. I'm excited to play Imperial Miners, actually. Um, I let, let me see. I'll scroll through the BGG hotness real quick to see if there are any SN games that have risen to the top. I'm glad to see Apiary is on there. Um, I'm curious about the White Castle. Curious about... Uh, I think Last Light may have officially debuted at SN. I have a pre-order for Last Light that I'm really curious about. Even Fall, I'm, I'm curious about. Curious about that one. Rats of Wistar, I'm curious about that as well. I'm sure there are many others. That's just me looking at the BGG hotness from some of the games that may have a little but extra buzz right now due to Essen. Edward says that he picked up the Wingspan fan art pack at Essen. <laughs> Edward's making a joke here. I want to make it clear that Edward, I think, is making a joke, um, even though you rejected his submission. So Edward submitted art for the Wingspan fan art pack about a week ago. Uh, which is, well, after it's too late for us to add it, obviously, to the Wingspan fan art pack. Edward, I can't remember if you actually did submit that art to us back in February or March. If you did, um, I mean, we accepted pretty much every illustration that that uh, that was sent to us. Uh, so uh, maybe there maybe there was a duplicate, unless there was a duplicate. And, and, and if there was a duplicate, then we chose one of the uh, one over the other, and then we reached out to the artist and said. Uh, of the duplicate, the one that we didn't choose, and said, we'd love to still include art from you if you'd like to submit another illustration. So we tried to include as many as possible. Nancy Jane says, Marvel Snap. Uh, these are the uh, phones that you enjoy playing on your mobile phone, on your cell phone. And she says, uh, Wingspan for Longer Moments and Sagrada. Paul says, every, do I ever use playingcards.io? I never have, Paul. Paul says, I'm new to it and absolutely love it. Played it Played on there last night and then on TTS, and I was overwhelmed by dislike for TTS. That's Tabletop uh, Simulator. I wish our industry had a better option. That's great to hear that about PlayingCards.io. We usually use Tabletopia. We don't use TTS, but um, but uh, you know it is very similar to to TTS and Tabletopia. But yeah, it's great to hear about PlayingCards.io, Paul. Um, I usually play when I play games online. I play on Board Game Arena, which I really enjoy. Mark says, in terms of release methods, I think for new titles, it would be good if they are released as they are announced so the excitement is still there when people buy the game. For games that are expansions or alternate universes for existing games, I think you could take your time with them to gauge demand using available data. Mark, you know, that uh, is a fair point. Yeah, um, for like the Expeditions expansion. So I think here's kind of the catch here, Mark, a little bit. Um, for the Expeditions expansion in particular. Yeah, I don't know. That... So maybe expansions are a good time to release information well in advance since I think the buzz of new expansions aren't, that isn't as big of a deal, having kind of a, a, a that, that built up momentum and excitement that you carry over 
if you announce it and then have it on the web store soon afterwards. Um, for expansions, I'd, I'd rather make sure that everyone who wants a first printing copy of the expansion can actually get it. So um, maybe that is a fair case to at least reveal details of, about the expansion and gather emails well in advance, if not accept pre-orders for it. So I will, uh, I'll make a note about that, especially since we're kind of wrapping up work on the expeditions expansion right now. I'll make a note about that. Thank you, Mark, for that, that feedback. How, would, how do other people feel about that in terms of um, uh, expansions? Like, are you more likely to pre-order an expansion even if you have to wait months until you get it? Uh, or at least are you open to sharing your email and saying, hey, I'm, I'm pretty interested in this expansion if you end up making it. Uh, make sure you make a copy for me, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm scrolling back down to the, the comments here that I missed before. Sorry, Facebook is doing its weird scrolly thing. Here we go. Um, let's see. Daniel says, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I submitted a game design through the website and I'm really confident the design fits all of the 12 tenets of Stonemaier Games. Is there a way to get a chance for a quick pitch or a second look? Daniel, I, I really appreciate you submitting through our submission process. Uh, the process is there for a reason. So people submit it through to the process and, uh, and my coworker and my co-founder, Alan, reviews it. And if he sees anything that he's really excited about that he thinks I might get really excited about, you'll definitely hear from him. So yeah, thank you for, for going through that process. Um, Derek says, it's been a busy time, but I'm excited to finally get our copy of Expeditions to the table this weekend. Nothing like an unopened game uh, staring you down every day as you go to work. I hear you. I definitely hear that. Anthony says, have you played uh, Sushi New Version Dim Sum? I have not played... Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're asking there, Anthony. Is this a new version of Sushi Go or Sushi Roll? Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. There, there, in the game Sushi Roll, there is, I believe, some form of dim sum in it. I played Steam Up, if that's what you're referring to. Uh, Jonathan says, I have, I definitely have enjoyed and preferred the launch style announcements as I know I'm going to pick up nearly every project. Uh, that's awesome, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that there is that, that type of, uh, of, of customer that we have at Summer Game who gets excited about anything that we make. I, I am flattered and honored by that. I really do appreciate it. And I can see how that type of customer like you just prefers the launch method. Board Game Byte says that they tried Euphoria at a little mini convention of a couple weeks ago and really enjoyed it. Hope it becomes available again soon. I think it is out there with some retailers, but uh, it's out of stock with us right now. We are going to make more. We are actively making more, but it uh, won't be in stock for a little bit longer. Maxwell says he likes FTL and Mini Metro Motorways on his iPad. We're talking about games that you can play on your phone or iPad. Sounds like most people, though, are answering about their iPad or tablet, not their phone. So I wonder how many people are really actively playing games on their phone anymore. I know that was kind of a big deal for a while, and it, maybe it's just off my radar because um, I don't do it. But, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's just becoming less of a thing for people to do, given that there's other stuff that you can do on your phone instead. Let's see, Sam has an answer about that. Five minutes behind, he says, I removed most of my phone games after looking at how much screen time they were taking up. I still have Hearts as my quick game to play a few hands. Uh, he says, I named the CPUs after my dad and others I grew up playing Hearts with. That's neat. I played a lot of Hearts in college myself, Sam, but I haven't played on my, I haven't played on my phone. Mark says, I would enjoy playing Rolling Realms on his phone in the future. Hopefully it becomes a reality one day. I think it depends on the, on the success of the Steam version of Rolling Realms. Um, but yeah, it would be awesome to see Rolling Realms on mobile devices, on iOS and Android someday. Miranda says that she likes the... Sorry, got a weird scroll there. Um, okay. She likes the Exploding Kittens app to play with her spouse, but other than that, we usually just use in use game pigeon in texting good morning Corey. hope your new baby is doing well Corey has been uh posting a lot less recently because he's been busy with a new baby joe says do you have any plans to bring more of your games to the nintendo switch 
So that's entirely up to, to the digital developers to whom we license our games. Um, I would love for them to release our games on as many viable formats as possible, whether it's Steam, iOS, Android, Switch, uh, even Xbox and things like that, other, other platforms. Um, I think most of their sales come on Steam and iOS, but they have seen some sales on Switch and Android as well. So uh, if a developer wants to do it, they are, they're more than welcome to do that. That is part of, the, uh, part of our license with those digital developers. They're welcome to do it. Michelle says she prefers to get the expansion as soon as the announcement is released. So Michelle, you prefer to actually just pay for it, buy it and forget it, is, uh, is your thinking for expansions. Um, maybe we'll try that with Expeditions. Yeah, maybe we'll try that. Anthony says that he's open to ideas, to both ideas for pre-orders and announcements, the launch method that we use. Maybe do a test run for next year's Wingspan expansion. I haven't actually said that we have an expansion coming out next year for Wingspan. Um, Elizabeth has just started working on the expansion now, so that probably more likely puts it at 2025 for the next Wingspan expansion. Luke says, do you guys make trick-taking games? We do not have, uh, I think we published 16 games at this point and none of them are trick-taking games, Luke. Pete says, I played Expeditions last weekend with some friends who weren't as into Scythe as me, but they loved the sequel. That's awesome, Pete, and thank you for sharing it with them. He says, it was neat to see how the game appeals to a different type of gamer while retaining the Scythe world as a draw. Yeah, that was a tough balance for me to design around, trying to make something that I think people who love Scythe will enjoy, but also make something that people who either didn't like something about Scythe or are new to Scythe would still enjoy. Um, I'm glad I pulled it off for, for your friends, Pete. Okay, Anthony clarified that Target came out with a new Sushi Go version of the game um, called Dim Sum, or it's themed around Dim Sum. That's awesome, Anthony. No, I haven't, I haven't heard of that one or played that one. Michelle says that she's uh, happy to share she just tried the new Sashi Get On Board. Uh, the game called Get On Board Paris and Roma. That's exciting, Michelle. What did you think about it? I know nothing about that one. Edward Jones also mentions that he enjoys playing on his phone uh, Lords of Waterdeep and and Splendor. I, yeah, I played a lot of the app version of Lords of Waterdeep. I own the Steam version now. I still don't own the, the tabletop version of Lords of Waterdeep as much as I actually really do love that as a worker placement game. Um, Corey says, you've talked about magic drafts a few times. Yeah, oftentimes when a new magic set comes out, I will, I will do a draft, I'll host a draft of it. He says, do you like any other trading card games? He recently started playing Pokemon on the app while on baby duty at 3 a.m. I have dabbled in a few other ones. Like I've played Keyforge. I've, I'm looking at my shelf over here. I've played a little, um, played a little Lorcana, Lorcana, Disney Lorcana. Had a fun kind of weekend with that. Um, Played a little Flesh and Blood. I think those are the ones that I've played so far. And I'm curious about the new Star Wars one coming out and curious about Altered. Altered is maybe the one that I'm the most excited about. Not getting into it as from the collectible perspective, but getting into it just to play for fun. That's how I approach CCGs now. I think a lot of people inherently associate them with the concept of uh, like pay to play, but it is very easy to treat a CCG like any other game and just buy a few packs and play it for fun with the people that you play games with for fun. Um, and that is definitely my approach to, to CCGs. I'm not trying to compete with them, not trying to collect them. I either do a draft for Magic or like for Lorcana. I bought some starter packs and a few boosters and had a lot of fun playing it over the course of a weekend with Megan. And maybe we'll get the expansion when it comes out too, to give that a try. Garrett says, did I pre-order Dune Imperium Uprising? I did not. I did not. Um, I'm hoping to get the chance to play it at some point, but no, I have not. I've not pre-ordered it. Speaking of which, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I should go into on my topics before I focus on questions for the rest of this chat. I have the note to myself, launch week. Oh, how launch week went. Um, yeah, because I didn't really do a blog post about like how many copies of things that we sold, anything like that. Uh, we had one of our best, best ever launch weeks for Apiary. And I did one thing that I haven't done in a long time that I should have done. But you know, like when you back a Kickstarter project, you back it. And then, or, or if you follow it, say you follow it and you don't back it, you get a reminder and, and during the last 48 hours to, to say, you know, hey, if you want to back it, now's the time to do so. But I've never done that for one of our launches. Our launches are usually a five-day discount on a product, uh, Wednesday through Sunday evening. And I have sent out an email upon launch, 
but I've never followed up, as I can recall, I can, I've never followed up on like the last day to say, hey, like you were following this, this project, this product. Um, if you haven't backed it, if you haven't bought it, now is the time to do so to get it out of the discount. And I actually did that for once I did, for Apiary and it was great. I think, I don't know, I can't exactly say that people appreciated it, but based on the bump in sales, I think it was a good reminder to people that, hey, the discount's going away. The launch discount is going away soon. Now is my chance to get it at that discount. And so I definitely want to do that in the future. One thing I will do, and you may have noticed this, is that, um, in fact, I'm sure Garrett, Garrett, you probably noticed this. I bet you uh, bought it on launch day. And then I bet you also got that email on Sunday saying, hey, if you haven't bought it, now's your chance to do so. I think in the future, I will try to call that list of people who had already ordered it in the first four days so that you don't get that email saying um, you can still order it because you've already ordered it. So um, that's something I'll change in the future, but that's something I tried new this time, something obvious in hindsight, but uh, but I, I think it was a good call to do. Um, other things going on, I had a windshield replacement on my car last week that, that knocked off a morning of my time um, on Thursday because I, I drive a, a Tesla Model 3 and it's not easy to replace windshields on those cars apparently. So I had to actually go to the dealer and wait around for a few hours while they took care of it. I also appeared on the World at Work podcast, uh, or I at least recorded the World at Work podcast last week. I think the episode will come out this week or next week. And yeah, I think those are all the topics I was going to cover. Earlier in, the, in this livecast, I mentioned the order shipping status for... Uh, for the Wingspan Art Pack and for Apiary. If you're curious about that and want me to repeat it, just let me know. I'm happy to repeat that. I will go look or look over at questions now again. Miranda says, she says, uh, I usually don't use phone games, but they are really helpful when family members are long distance for time. That, I like that, Miranda. She says, it helps me stay more connected with them when we have run out of things to talk about three hours later. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you don't, I think games provide a really nice platform to engage with someone, whether in person or long distance, um, without sometimes the burden of conversation. Sometimes we don't always have a big conversation topic to have, but, but playing a game with someone can be a way to connect with, with them. So, um, yeah, I love that, Miranda. That's a good reminder. Carol's popping in to say, hi, good morning, Carol. Nancy Jane says, I liked the way that Wingspan Asia was announced. This is a good, um, good call out here, Nancy Jane. She says, I liked getting a look at the cards early. I would agree that we can easily wait longer for an expansion than a new game. Yes. So Nancy Jane brings up a great point. So we didn't do a pre-order for Wingspan Asia because we made a lot of copies. I think we made 100,000 copies in the first print run of Wingspan Asia. We were pretty sure we had that covered. Um, uh, more of a question mark for sure for the for expeditions. But what we did differently is on a month-to-month -month basis, basis, I revealed a new card that showcased some new mechanism from that expansion. So I revealed the region, and then month-to-month, -month I revealed a card. And that let people stay engaged with it uh, during the production process, and then right when it was ready to, to ship, they were able to order it. Um, so they didn't have to spend money in advance, but they were, they were anticipating it and buying into it, and I knew that I had demand covered for it because of the sheer amount that we made, the sheer volume. So I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something that I could certainly do if we opened up pre-orders for the Expeditions expansion. If we did that early, I could still do that reveal, that monthly reveal. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, Paul clarifies that the target version of this game is Sushi Go Spin Some for Dim Sum. That's a fun, that's a fun name. Uh Sorry, just scrolling through comments again. Facebook always does this weird thing where it, it scrolls ahead, it scrolls behind, so I, I can never see exactly where I am. Okay, Nathan says, I agree with the phone game, unless it's super quick. The Seven Wonders app is spectacular. You can play the game in like, in like three minutes on the app. That's cool, that's impressive. Derek enjoys playing Castles. I think Derek is referring to Castles of Mad King and Ludwig, which I've heard has a pretty good mobile app. Tony spent the last week at Walt Disney World. Just wanted to let you know that I purchased a copy of Apiary last Wednesday while standing in line for Rise of the Resistance. That's awesome, Tony. That's really cool. Cool. Um, and I'm glad you got to ride at Rise of, uh, Rise of the Resistance. That was an incredible ride that we that we took when we were doing the, the Star Cruiser. Um, yeah, really cool ride. Shows you this, the sheer scale of the things in the, in the Star Wars universe. 
Carol says, if we're talking about board game apps, if we're talking about mobile apps, games that people play typically, typically in idle moments on their phone. Doesn't have to be board game related. But Carol says she loves Spirit Island, Castles of Burgundy, Viticulture, Cat Lady, and Everdell. She likes all of those apps. Ian says, now that volleyball season is over, his board game club is starting up next week. He's inviting the fifth graders for both days to start and learn many games, but, to, but learn one to two really well. So Ian's plan is to uh, split, the, after that, to split the fifth, fifth graders between the two days and invite fourth graders, and fifth graders will help teach the fourth graders. That's great. I think learning, retaining, teaching games is a great skill, I think, for anyone to have, especially kids, students. Um, awesome method there, Ian. I'm curious to hear how that goes and how the students enjoy that. Nathan says, uh, maybe Apiary should have a crossover like a death honeycomb or something like that. I think... I'm, I'm pretty sure Connie put a Star Wars reference into Apiary. I can't think of one offhand, but I'm pretty sure one is in there somewhere. Anthony says that the discount launch moved him to be a, a Stillmeyer champion. That's awesome, Anthony. And yeah, the discount is huge when you're during launch week, when you're also a Stillmeyer champion. It often ends up being like a 40 to 45% discount. Garrett says the email was a great reminder to me to let other people know, hey, if you want this, the discount is all, almost over. That's true. That's fair, Gary. That I, and I appreciate you treating it that way instead of as a nuisance in your inbox as a reason to to share with other people. I like I like that a lot. So maybe maybe I shouldn't remove people from the list who have already bought the product. Uh, Chad says he appreciated my video last week about endowed progress. Yeah, that was uh, my Sunday video this past week about games that give you something at the very beginning that you would normally have to pay for or work towards in the game to give you that feeling that you've already accomplished something before you've even started the game. Uh, Chad says, especially about the psychology behind the feel good reasons for it. Is there any other psychology, psych uh, psychological techniques that you like to use in your game designs? I have a few articles about behavioral psychology I haven't tapped into that for a while in terms of game design. I'm sure I do, Chad. I, I love behavioral psychology. Um, I love doing things that make players feel good and feel, uh, you know, that those forms of positive player interaction. So I am doing a video soon about positive player interaction. I bet some of those things will come up in that video, but none come to mind offhand right now. Mark says, will you be playing with risky rewards on the next live plays of Rolling Realms? He says, I heard it sold well in Essen. Do you think you'll have a risky rewards redux? Uh, for the latter, I don't think so, but today, you know, I hadn't thought about playing with Risky Rewards, but um, let's see how hard the, the realms I'm playing with are today. I'm playing with Honey Buzz. Honey Buzz is pretty hard. Arc Nova is a little easier. So maybe I will use it a little bit this week, Mark. Um, yeah, and maybe I'll, I'll pull people as I'm playing. If people want me to play with it or don't want, want me to play with it, you know, maybe I will. I'll, I'll put it on top of the stack. Why not? It's it's totally optional. No one needs to play with it. Um but it is fun to play with and get those those higher scores. Paul says, he, big excitement, is really excitement for this weekend's uh, Stumbar Games Design Day. He says, you've published a number of games that have been shown there. Then again, I don't think that's your primary goal for the event. Can you talk a little bit about the balance there? Yeah, Paul brings up a great point. So for the, for the most part, we run Design Day because... We tried it and it felt good, and so we did it again. Like I really liked the community feeling of, of having a bunch of people who were excited to play test games together. We're not the only ones to run events like this by, by far, but, um, but it feels good that we have the opportunity to do so and that people get excited about joining us for this event. And it was fun last year to add disc golf to it too uh, and, and to do that again this year. So that's the by far the majority reason we do it because it feels good, it seems fun, it seems like a, a nice thing to do, a nice thing to host. And I'm glad that people join us for it. The secondary reason, the very small secondary reason, is that it is also a great opportunity for us to scout games um, that we can potentially publish. We can see those games in person. We can see how people are responding to them. We can see their reactions to it. We can talk to the designers if we uh, don't know them already. Some of them we do know. Some of them we don't know. So uh, it's just a nice opportunity to do that, to walk around and see the game. So I, th I think in those regards, Paul, the balance is my goal of that day is to make sure everyone's having a good time or to help them have a good time and to make them feel welcomed and that they're having a productive time, really. Um, and so that's my main goal. My very small secondary goal is to also keep an eye on the games that are being played to see if any might interest us as a publisher. So that's that's my balance for it. Skylar says, we tried out the Star Wars deck building game last night and really enjoyed it. I love that game. Love the deck building game. I am really impressed with the depth of the game with very few components. When you are publishing games, how do you make decisions about streamlining components versus adding deluxe ones? 
Skylar, in my opinion, it's all about the value the game offers um, compared to the price. So it's something I think about throughout the the design, the kind of the the production design for any game. Like, uh, what is someone expecting to get out of this game? What experience is someone expecting to get for the price that they're paying? Sometimes that means that I might cut components. So if there's a component that players are hardly ever using, hardly ever interacting with, but it would add $5, $10 to the price of the game, I'm probably not gonna include that in the game. However, if there's a very small component or, or component that will often be used, that players, that will add to the mechanical and thematic experience of the game, that might only bump up the price by a little bit, um, and players might still get a lot of value from it, or uh, the value they get is even more than the extra price that they'll pay, then I'm pretty likely to add it. I do admire games like the Star Wars deck building game. That game probably costs them, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to put a number to it, but it is not an expensive game to produce, given that it's mostly just cards and a few plastic tokens. Um, and let's see what they're charging for it. I think it's worth every dollar. I, I, I love the Star Wars deck building game. I'm just curious what their MSRP is. I'm going to pull it up real quick. Star Wars deck building. Here we go. $38 MSRP. That is an amazing profit margin. $38 MSRP for the Star Wars deck building game. Definitely worth the cost, I think. Um, I, I, I don't think I paid full price for my copy. But, uh, but $38. That is, a, that is a very good margin for... Uh, for Fantasy Flight, selling uh, the Star Wars deck building game. Ron Yu says that he's loving Expedition, so does his group. About eight games already within two weeks. That's awesome, Ron. Wow, eight, that's that's wonderful to hear. And I appreciate your questions in the group as well, Sean, uh, Ron. I, I, yeah, you've asked some good questions there in the Expeditions Facebook group. Mark says, the monthly reveal of Rolling Realms Redux reminds me of the monthly reveals for Wingspan Asia, Asia which uh, Nancy Jane mentioned a little bit earlier. <laughs> Mark says he's still guessing up to this day what the pixelated games represent on Rolling Realms Redux. And yeah, that is a good comparison. That The, the reveal for Rolling Realms Redux is very similar to what we did for Wingspan Asia. Hilda is joining us all the way from Florida for this weekend's Design Day. I'm so excited to meet you, Hilda, and play some games with you and play disc golf with you and your husband. It should be a blast. Uh, Carol, too. Carol's coming to Design Day. Susanna will be there. I'm seeing a lot of people who are actually going to be there this weekend. Um... Tom says, also like Corey, he has a new baby, and with the 3 a.m. feeds, he needs a new mobile game. He says, my top 10 games inspired him to start learning Magic the Gathering through the new Magic the Gathering Arena. Or not the new, but through Magic the Gathering Arena, and he's hooked. That's awesome, Tom. Yeah, I've heard great things about that app. I played it with a, a little bit, but, um, but, not, but I've heard great things from people who have dived deep into it. Ooh, Tom says he recommends TED Talks by Rory Sutherland. Awesome. I will look that up. That name doesn't ring a bell. I like uh, Tam, uh, Dan Pink and um, and Dan Ariely, the two Dans. But I will look up uh, Roy Sutherland. Thank you. Luke says that uh, my video about endowed progress made him think about some endowed progress methods that he could use on the campaign game that he's playing. That's cool, Luke. I, I like that applied to not just one-off games, but also campaign games. Actually, before I forget, the other articles that I wrote recently, I wrote one answering three questions from ambassadors this past uh, Monday. And then what was the one before that? Oh yeah, article that got a huge amount of traction. I wrote on Thursday about, is there a future for written reviews? Um, this wasn't me in any way bashing the written format. In fact, it was me trying to elevate the written format because obviously through the two blog entries that I write every week, I love the written format. Um, but it was me one pondering the uh, the importance of including a few written reviewers among advanced copy reviewers. And I think the overwhelming sentiment was, yes, it's in, worth including at least one, maybe two. Most of our written reviewers typically happen in the second wave. So not, not the advanced copies that are very scarce, but the second wave where I send out usually around 36 or to 48 copies to advanced copy or to, to early reviewers, not advanced copy, but early reviewers. And then uh, there are you know, many batches to follow in the months that, that follow that to written reviewers. Um, but yeah, it was a great article that gave me a lot more confidence in sending games to reviewers that specialize in the written in the written format. And a number of written reviewers were got some nice shout outs in that article as well. If you want to check that out, if you are hankering for some written reviewer, written reviewers, there are definitely some good ones mentioned on that thread. 
Garrett's still hoping to make it to Design Day one year. It sounds like a blast. It would be wonderful, Garrett, to have you and Allie at Design Day some year. Um, hopefully, you can join in the future. Tom says, do you always publish at least one of the Design Day games? No, no, there's nothing. It's not a, it's not a selection process. It's, it's if we see something that might work out in the future, that's awesome. I think so far, what are the ones that we published? Uh, Red Rising appeared there. Um, uh, Between Two Cities appeared there, but after we'd already decided to publish it. Pem Pendulum appeared there at Design Day. We discovered Pendulum and we discovered uh, Apiary. Apiary at Design Day as well. I don't think I'm forgetting any, but yeah, those are the ones that come to mind right now. Okay, uh, and Carol's right that Red Rising was a game that I was already involved with when it appeared at Design Day, so we already knew that we were going to publish that one too. Um, okay, Sam says, Sam has a comment that he says, I could read privately, but was, he's sharing it publicly here. So he's, he says, I was... I was able to pull together a learn and play event for Everstone at a local game cafe with the digital samples. So this is a game that Sam's working on that I'm excited about um, before they get out sent out to content creators. So Sam is self-publishing a game called Everstone that looks really, really awesome. Looks like it has a lot of Stonemaier Games uh, tenants built into it. So feel free to check that out. Sam, feel free to share a link to um, where people can sign up to get more information about Everstone if you want. Um, he says it was the silver lining for missing out, unfortunately, on design day this year. Oh, Garrett says that Star Wars The Deck Building Game is on sale for like $20. Garrett says $19 on Prime Day today. If you haven't played the Star Wars Deck Building Game and you like either Star Wars or Deck Building, I highly suggest getting that game. And $19 is a steal for, for that game. The amount of replayability that you get from the Star Wars Deck Building Game, I really hope they make an expansion for it. It plays well without an expansion. Tons of replayability without the expansion. But I hope that they can add more characters, more cards to it at some point. Tim says that he got it on sale as well. That's awesome, Tim. Um, Jason says, good morning, Jason. He says, after taking a different approach to... Uh, oh, so Jason has a very similar question to what I was talking about earlier about uh, expeditions versus apiary. Um, Jason, yeah, I did talk about this a little bit earlier, but a quick summary of it is that uh, I lean to... In general, I lean towards the launch strategy. However... Some people have brought up the idea that expansions are probably really well suited for pre-order versus um, versus launch, or at the very least, a pre-reveal where you're gaining uh, before you go. You, we even go to print that we are um, gathering information from how many people want us to make the expansion. So that is something that I'm going to consider like this week for the expeditions expansion. So um, that's that's my thinking right now on it. Chet says, without spoilers, how did you feel about Ahsoka? He says, I love how this is the weirdest Star Wars live action has ever been. It felt very much like the Rebels cartoon. Yeah, we watched the finale last week and really enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed most of the Star Wars and Marvel content on Disney+, Plus, the shows on Disney+, Plus, and Ahsoka was no exception. I thought the finale was, uh, was really cool. Um, yeah, I... I I really enjoyed it. I, I had not watched Rebels, but I, I really enjoyed the live action show. Uh, Corey says there, there are always hubs in different areas of the U.S. for different hobbies. Like comedy seems to be centered around New York, stand up uh, places. Austin seems to um, to get your start, uh, to get your startup. I think that's what you were saying. St. Louis seems to be a hub of board game design. Do you think there's a particular reason for that? And are there other board game hub areas that you're aware of? You know, it's interesting. I, maybe maybe there is something to be said about momentum in a certain area where if uh, more and more designers work together, get to know each other and, and play off each other, improve each other's designs. I think DC is probably that too. Um, that's where Elizabeth Hargrave is in that area. I think there's, and Connie, Connie Vogelman's there. Matthew O'Malley uh, of Between Two uh, Cities fame is there as well. So I think maybe there's some of that, 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 uh, once you get a certain number of designers that, that are really working together, playing off each other, um, may not even necessarily play test all that often with each other, but they have access to each other. Um, and they're, they're bringing in more people too. They're not just uh, working with established designers, but also bringing in new designers all the time, uh, which I think uh, St. Louis is a very welcoming place for that sort of thing. Um, but I don't know. I, I also am cautious to make a generalization about that. Uh, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Corey, but it's also... 
there, there, you know, there are pockets of designers everywhere um, in probably every major city, depending on the size of that city. Yeah. So maybe a little bit of both there. Uh, Jerry says, good morning. Is there a game that unexpectedly st uh, struck an emotional chord with you while playing it to the extent of having tears of joy or sadness? Um, that's a great question, Jerry. I don't know if a game has ever brought me to tears. I will say, uh, while designing a game this past weekend, I think this is one of the first times as this happened, while, while writing something for a game that I was designing, I was brought to tears. I know that sounds egotistical, but, um, but it was not due to the, like the quality of what I was writing, but it was due to the content of what I was writing. I don't want to spoil it at all, but it is something that, um, that moved me and that made me think a lot about, um, you know, some of the things that I've, uh, gone through over the last year, like Biddy. You can see that I have a new backdrop here, um, Biddy's memorial back here. Um, so yeah, I, 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 that was a first for me, uh, Jerry. And uh, I'm curious to see for people who end up reading that part of this game, um, not everyone will discover this part, but some people will, how, uh, how they'll respond emotionally to it as well, or if they will. Um, Mark says he's so excited for the 2023 Stillmeyer Champion shirt. That's part of the, the ship out too that we're doing right now. So many Easter eggs on there. There are. There are quite a few Easter eggs on that shirt. Carol says, have I gotten the chance to start season two of Loki? Speaking of Marvel shows on Disney Plus, yes, yeah. I watched the the premiere last week and I'm excited to see what comes next. And yeah, it's a, it was very funny. Like it was one of the funnier episodes of a any Marvel show that I watched so far. And I'm curious to see how they'll they'll balance that with all the sci-fi stuff happening going forward. Okay, Sam is posting the links to this game called Everstone that Sam is, Sam is working on. I don't know if I had signed up for the Kickstarter launch, but I will do that. I had not. I have now, Sam. Um, but yeah, I am really excited about this game. Uh, it reminds me a lot of, a, of the type of game that Stillmire Games might publish, uh, except that it's one of four players. Nothing is one of four players, but we only publish games that play at least five players. But, um, but I know Sam has researched a lot into game design and spent a lot of time and effort on this game. So I'm very excited to see what he has done with it on that when the Kickstarter goes live. Rocky says, did you decide whether or not to back Kavango? I did. Rocky, I think you were the one that recommended it. Right after that live cast, I went and backed it. Um, so yeah, I am now a pride, proud backer of Kavango. Garrett says, and this is a question for everyone. Has, has that, Jerry's question, has anyone ever played a game, a tabletop game or role-playing game that brought them to tears or any other really strong emotion. And Garrett says uh, that Alice is Missing got him excited to check it out. It moved Quinn's to tears. And um, I've heard great things about that game, Alice is Missing. I think it's a role-playing game that's, that you're play, playing over text. Is that the one? Maybe I'm mistaking that with something else. Mark says, with the end of the year fast approaching, how do you feel about your year so far? Any last stretch thoughts? So I'm a little conflicted about our, our final couple months coming up, Mark, because there are things that I wish we had in stock that I know that we're, or that, that are looking increasingly likely that we won't have in time for the holiday season. Um, things like the restock of the nesting box. Euphoria, I don't think, will arrive in time. Um, the Tapestry Civilizations, the Revised Civilizations, the Libertalia promo thing that we're working on, it's not looking like they'll arrive in time. So I'm kind of looking towards the future, I'm re regretting that the previous decisions made that will result in us not having these things in time for holiday season. At the same time, January is a time too where people can get things and play things and have fun with things. So I'm fine with that as well. Uh, so I'm looking ahead there a little bit, Mark. Over the, looking back though, I'm really proud of the two games that we released this year, Apiary and Expeditions. I, you know, it's the first time in a long time that I think we've had two heavier games release in the same year. Um, medium medium to heavyweight games. Uh, so yeah, and that we released the Tapestry expansion earlier this year. I think, um, yeah, overall, for, for a, a year where inflation has been a, a major factor still, um, I think we've tried our best to serve customers based on pricing and, and value and things like that. So uh, yeah, so I guess that's my quick thought looking back and looking forward. Uh, I wish we had done maybe a little better planning so that we could have had some things for the holiday season. But we do have something fun planned for early December, something that we have full control over. Um, it's just the, the things that we, we had control over before and now we don't have control over because we're at the whim of, 
of production and shipping schedules that, that I'm regretting a little bit. But 2024 will be a great year then because we have a lot of fun stuff coming out at the beginning of 2024 uh, and some fun stuff coming out later in the year as well. Uh, Chad says he likes Biddy's wall art back there. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of wonderful things that people gave us for Biddy and that it fit really well, nicely on that wall there. The one, I don't know if you can see right in the middle here, but this is Biddy as little angel. Um, I think that's a really cute uh, little stained glass Biddy there. I feel like I had some other topic to cover. Uh, we covered a few questions today about mobile games, games that have brought you to tears. Let me see if there's any blog posts that I have coming up that that I'm curious about your take on. No, I don't have any big questions right now for that. One of the questions I will be asking still my ambassadors in the near future are games in which both sides of cards are used. So that cards don't just have a generic back that the, the back has something different about it. Could be something big that's different or something small that's different about it that, um, that you really enjoy. So button shy games will definitely appear on that list. But if you have any other games that where both sides of the cards are used in creative ways, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I just played Spots the other day, and Spots was a good reminder that both sides of the cards are visible on Spots. So you can see the top card of the deck in Spots and know that maybe, hey, that's a card that would work well with my Tableau right now. Um, I'm going to add it to my, my inactive, my incomplete dogs, or ignore it until someone else takes it so you can get a better one that, that might fit your strategy better. So I think... Uh, I like the way the spots does that. Uh, Dwayne says that other than crying over my uncle cheating at Monopoly, I teared up cheering for the local kid competing at the world's uh, championship for X-Wing probably eight years ago. Yeah, that's a, I definitely tear up rooting for other people um, quite frequently, especially like movies and in real life, sporting events, things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, having my own emotional experience while playing a game is, is, I think, fairly rare for me. Chad says, any favorite game components this year? Anything really new or creative? Oh, that's a big topic, Chad. Let's, I'm going to glance at my top favorite games of 2023 so far to see if there's any components that really jump out. Um, so one that does jump out a little bit in uh, Forest Shuffle. I really like in Forest Shuffle the split cards, the, the cards that are either divided in the middle to create two cards with one or divided top to bottom to create two cards top to bottom. I think that that's a really neat thing to do with a card. Talking about cards that use both sides. They only use one side of the card in Forest Shuffle, but to have two cards crammed into that one card, it's just a really neat thing to, to see. Susanna says, this is a game that I want to try sometime, 10 Candles was a highly emotional experience. She says, I think tabletop role-playing games have that power in a way that tabletop board games are less likely to. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, 10 Candles, as far as I'm aware, is a role-playing game where you light 10 candles, I think at the beginning, maybe you light some of them throughout, but when the last candle burns out, that it triggers the end of the game. Anthony says, oh, Arc Nova. Arc Nova does have double-sided cards. Anthony, I'm glad you mentioned that. I did not have that on the list, but it's super obvious that uh, both sides of the action cards in Arc Nova play an important role in the action selection, being able to upgrade some of those cards to the backside. Just recently, I played First in Flight, and it has a very slight similar mechanism where at some point, if you achieve fame, then your character card flips over to their famous side and becomes slightly more powerful. If we have a few comments right now that okay, uh, uh, Felix says that there's a small Kickstarter running now called One Card Maze that utilizes um, double-sided cards really smartly. One Card Maze. I will check that out. Let me pull it up right now on Kickstarter. Kickstarter One Card Maze. Here we go by Andrew Blair Dobson. How does it use? Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. A lot of really neat maze cards. That's fun. Yeah, I haven't seen how it uses doubles. Maybe it just has more maze on the back. Very cool. Very cool little mazes here. Yeah, I'm going to check this out. Thank you for sharing that. Nathan says you should do a year in review video. I'm sure we would all enjoy it. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, I usually do. I do 
usually two blog posts about the year in the year in review. And maybe I should do a video as well um, to accompany those blog posts. I do one where I look back upon the year and we're still in October now. So we still have three months to go. I do this at the end of the year. Um, I definitely do a big video about my favorite games of the year. But uh, yeah, I typically do one about year in review and then one when we have our tax information where I do kind of a by the numbers look at the past year, but that, that takes a while. But yeah, I, I always do an annual year in review blog post and I'm open to doing a video about, about it as well. Mark says I, he thinks blood on the clock tower brought him to tears once. He doesn't require wh re recall why, but it was probably due to an inter interaction with another player. Oh, Miguel points out that Forest Shuffle makes use of the backside of the cards. You can use them as a seedling instead of planting a tree. Yeah, I don't know if I'll count that in the list. Like in Wingspan, you can tuck cards, but the back of the card isn't really doing anything there. You're just using the card as a token or a counter at that point. Um, so unless there's variable, important, uh, yeah, variable information on the back, I won't count it for this list. Garrett says Point Salad. I haven't been played points out in a long time, but I agree that that does use both sides of the cards. I'm making a note by that. Thank you. All right, some great recommendations here. Uh, Rocky points out the Forest Shuffle is on Board Game Arena as well. I think it's a game that's worth having the physical copy of, but it's great that it's on Board Game Arena to play it there as well. Thank you all today for your your thoughts and opinions on these topics. Always welcome. Always a joy for me to hear your your answers and your questions. I'm going to throw this up on YouTube now in case you have any follow-up thoughts that you want to pop into uh, the video and share later. Um, Mark has a few others that, that he's shared here. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a great week. I will see you next Wednesday when some of you might have your copies of the Wingspan Fan Art Pack and Apiary in hand. It'll probably take a few weeks, but some of you might have it next week. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.